This is Abnormal Entertainment. Some judge a man by the way he shakes a hand. And if he looks him in the eye. By the way he keeps his cool The way he treats a fool And all the things that he can buy His shoes How they shine Hey everybody, welcome. This is Daniel Garza. It's another episode of Put It Together. I want to start as usual thanking my producer, Mr. Kevin Myers. Thank you, sir. Inviting everybody to check us out at No More Entertainment, where you can find all the shows on the network. Go check them out. There's a show there for you. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Little Mexican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N. Check out everything I do, uh, videos, information, interviews, anything. Uh, just go check it out. Um, soon coming. We're, we're, it's un- under construction. Uh, LittleMexicanProductions.com is going to be up. Pretty soon, we're still working on it, trying to figure out where we want to put. But meanwhile, you can check me out at Little, Me- Little Mexican Productions on Facebook, and you find everything there. This uh, week, I have uh, another in- interview in the series. Uh, Drew Benson, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. So we were chatting a little bit before we started about how I, I, I got a hold of you, and uh I stalked you for a little while, and we, we finally <laughs> narrowed it down. It was Instagram. You were posting pictures um, because you were living out of – you're living currently. Yes. Out of your Winnebago. Yes. Yes, and you travel <laughs> all over the country. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, how is this guy doing it? Like, I, So I, I stalked you for a little while, and then we, we came to this book that you were writing. Um, yeah. But we'll get into the book in just a minute. I'm first curious, how long and why in a Winnebago? Great question. (laughs) It's so fun when I tell people that, when they ask where I live. Um, So it is currently uh, September 2017, and I bought it in November 2016. So um, I've been in it living full-time, no full residence besides that for, for this long. So... I bought it because honestly, just this idea kept coming to me. Hey, you should buy a a RV and travel around. (laughs) You should buy an RV and travel around. I thought that's, that's not, I'm not going to do that. And it kept coming. And finally, um, it woke me up at night one night and I was like, maybe I should look into this more. I had gone to RV shows and looked, I thought, no, no, no. And it just woke me up and I thought, well, let's go check it out. And if it, if it comes naturally, like easily, if the universe provides it easily, then I'm going to go for it. And it was so easy. That's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I, I feel like I can, like I should call you a uh, Winnebago Drew now. Like that, that's, <laughs> that's going to be your nickname. Like, which Drew are you talking about? Winnebago Drew, you know, the guy, the author. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to talk about. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and thank you for, um, for connecting me with the group so I could do some of the interviews. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, You're welcome. But tell us how you put it together. How I put it together. Wow. So I have, well, it's funny when you asked, um, when we talked about coming on the show, I was wondering, I wonder what he wants to talk about because what does he know about me? This is going to be fun. <clears throat> there are so many different, um, different things that, that, um, that I, that I've become, but basically I've become my most authentic self right now. And how I did that was, um, about six years ago, six or seven years ago, I realized that – I don't know if, if you even know this. This might be fun to surprise you with this. Um, about six years ago, I decided to transition from female to male. And so um, I went through that whole process and did it in a really positive way. Thankfully, I had a um, support system and and went through that. And I call it walked through the mud, so went through the whole um, – real process of, of going through the hard stuff of that. And in, in doing that, I ended up moving from Seattle to California, lived at the beach for a few years, and then um, 
like we said, ended up um, buying a Winnebago and started traveling. And basically, I'm trying to become the best, best version of me. And awesome. it's it's been working. Well, actually, I, 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 as I tell most of my guests, I do stalk people before they come <laughs> on. I, I did a lot of research for companies when I was younger. Um, so whenever somebody's going to come on the show, I'm everywhere. Like I'm, I'm going to find out the dirt because in case something comes up, I want to be able to be like, oh, okay, yeah. But I wasn't going to talk about it unless you talked about it. And, oh, thank uh, you. But yes, I, I did. I did know that, and it it, it surprised me. I'm going to confess that, um, and we don't have to go more into it if you want to. I think confess, I'm very ignorant about the uh, uh, about the transition. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not as knowledgeable as you think. And this is just to clarify to most uh, people out there listening, just because I'm gay doesn't mean I know everything that happens in trans or uh, bisexuals or lesbians. I, I, I'm very, I'm a lot more close-minded than I thought I was at 46. I thought I knew a lot. And then all of a sudden I have guests on the show and I'm like, oh shit, really? Yeah. Like, wow. Um, do you mind if we it, clarify it, some stuff for people? Yeah, um, do it. And, and I'll say this because I had a friend of mine on the show, uh, his, his show will air soon, but he just came out as bisexual. And I was like, you're actually the first person that I sit with on my show that's confessed being bisexual. Um, and I asked all the stupid questions that I know most people have. Um, so this is my moment of, of ignorance and, and so we can get all educated together. Okay. Um, how hard was it for you before you started transitioning? What, what, how difficult was your life before that? Um, great question. So uh, I came at 21. I realized I liked women, and so I must be gay. So from 21 to like 35, I dated women and was, was gay, and I was very butch and very... Um, tough I'm also I'm a really kind nice person but I was very tough and it escalated to the point right before I realized I needed to transition or realized what it was I was so angry that I was like you have to do something you are going to do something that's you know drinking a lot and just just ready to explode like a volcano and so internally it was very hard I, I struggled and I didn't know why I was so angry. I didn't know why. I didn't know why. <laughs> and yeah. And so it, I would say, um, lots, everybody has their own story. My story, what we're going to talk about today, I want to just clarify is my story. Just like you said, you're not speaking for every person that's like you in whatever way you want to talk about. I'm only going to speak for me. So right. my experience, yeah, was that, um, I knew I had to do something or I was going to go down a road that wasn't going to be. Frankly, I thought you're either going to die or go to jail. Like I wasn't doing anything that horrific, but I felt like I could. Um, and so I started, you know, continue. I started therapy and started digging in there and getting in there and figuring out what it was. And it like hit me like a Mack truck um, one day when we were processing. And it was like, it was right the, during the time that Chaz Bono had come out to the world. Okay. And so it gave me somebody who I could sort of relate to. Um, thank you for that, Chaz. And um, yeah, so it was very challenging. And the scariest part, I would say, was facing it myself and then thinking, I have to come out again and I have to tell people something that they may tell me they don't love me. Wow. Well, you know? I, I heard you say this and I've heard this in conversations on shows and people like there was this anger we were mad what were you mad at um well it's it's still a process you know to kind of really dig in there and think about the past like why did i feel that way but what i think right now is um i was mad so i was angry at um I think here's what I think when you, when I wasn't living my authentic life, I wasn't really doing what I wanted in my life and it built up, it built up, it broke me down, it broke me down to where I just got more and more upset and then angry. And I think you could actually, Daniel, relate that to uh, anybody's life. Right. 
right? It's like, what is it that's going on? Why are you so mad? <laughs> what is it that's happening there? And I, I even challenge myself to look at that now. If I get, if I start building up and getting upset about something, it's like, hey, what's going on with you? That that's that's triggering you. And and I was, I was mad at men. I was mad at my dad. He's a great guy, but I was mad at him for not seeing me. I was, I was, I was mad at men mostly, like, you know. Men that were just <laughs> that I wasn't, I guess. I don't know. But I was about to say, was it like the men, men that challenged me? me. Yeah. Men that like because being a being here's the thing: being butch is so much harder than it is being transgender. Not really? for everyone. Not for transgender. I would say not for transgender women. So, um, somebody who was born male physically and transitioned to female. Right. That is, I think, extremely challenging. And I think there's challenges also. I mean, it's very dangerous to be transgender right now even. Um, but for me, it was dangerous. I was, I blend. It's because I pass now. But when I was butch, I was a target. And I had a lot of violence. I had a lot of, um, the, yeah. the conflict with men was challenging, very challenging. So I have so much compassion and peace for my my um, butch sisters who may not feel that way about me, but I have some compassion and, and just love and right. support for. Because like, I can understand that part and the anger. And I asked that, I guess, to find the similarities. Because when I was growing up, my family, I, 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 for the most part, I've always been a really easygoing guy. I, I, and But when I was growing up and I was a teenager, my mom was like, why are you always so mad? And... You, I would hear my dad say, or my mom say, you know, we, we, we love you, we want you to be happy, whatever you want. And then I would hear my dad tell gay jokes in front of his friends, and they would all laugh. And I'd be like, how can I possibly tell you that I'm gay when you're making fun of me without knowing? So I would just get mad rather than say something, I get mad. So that was my anger for many years. And uh, I just want to kind of like, okay, yeah, I get it. You, we, we're, I, I feel like sometimes we're angry because we, we want something that we, we think we can't have and instead of asking for it or, or finding a way to get it we just rather be pissed off at people or just live it. right right we, we, we want to true we, we want to bring people into our misery instead of <laughs> we are hurting yeah i think that's very true and i think there's also sometimes in addition to or or um, instead of um, a defense mechanism because i mean there's a reason why i had to get tough i had to defend myself in fact, when I came out, when I realized I had to tell this, I had to do this, um, when I realized, oh my gosh, it's because you're a boy. And I knew I couldn't unknow that. I knew it was like, you can't pretend anymore. You know that's it. I realized I had to tell my mom. And when I told her, I was on the phone with her, and I said, I've defended myself this whole time, and I need you, I need you to defend me now. And I think that's why I was so tough, is because I had to defend myself with them. At least I felt I did. And now I decided to change the way I, I, I react and, and behave. And I decided to, um, although I'm more confident, I'm, you know, 44 years old. I have my own business. I have my own, um, I'm, I'm um, secure in that way, independent. Um, but I decided to come not be so angry, even though there's things that I could get pissed off about, right? <laughs> I mean, and it's like, I'm like, okay you're going to have to do this a different way because once I start doing it a different way, now I'm having conversations like this. If you're, if I was the angry me screaming and mad and all oh, that person's a jerk, you know, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking right now because that's not fun to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're dudes. We have to get this off. It's, it's part of <laughs> well, it. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Drew. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. And, and my, my boyfriend is near me listening probably. But post cancer, I was a very good driver. I was like, la 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 la, sixty five on the freeway. Post, I mean, uh, yeah, post, I mean, pre cancer, post cancer, I am the nastiest driver in the world. Everybody irritates me. Everybody pisses me off. I'm just mad. <laughs> like, get out of my way. I have to get a spinner to, while I'm driving so I can calm myself down. Yeah. But I'm just gonna say that as a man, I have the right to be pissed off on the road. That is my right as a man. <laughs> so I will own it. Um, Going back a little bit, if you don't mind, um, yeah. in my head, in, in my world, uh, I'm thinking, you're laying there in bed and you're thinking, I'm a boy. This is who I am. In my head, I want to think, 
the sky opened, angels sang, there was light coming onto you. But what was the reality? How, what was going on? What was, what was going on through your mind when, when that revelation came up? This is exactly what it was. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was like, wow. oh, can it not be that? Crap. I can still feel the feeling, too. It was just like, ugh. But then, after I had my first, after I had my top surgery, I was like, that's when the, that's when that happened. That's when the skies opened. Everything was like, yeah. well, it probably even first was testosterone. When I first took testosterone, I was like, yes. <laughs> oh. Warm water felt, it felt like it was amazing. And then when I had my top surgery, I was like, I felt like I set down the biggest box of rocks I, you could possibly carry. And I didn't even know I was carrying it. And I was all of a sudden like free. It was a remarkable feeling. Wow. And not because I was on drugs after the surgery. <laughs> it was just like, this hey, is amazing. After surgery, drugs are pretty good. I've been there. Yeah. yeah. It was but amazing. Yeah. I, 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 I almost, I'm going to say it like it's, Took a weight off your shoulders, per se. <laughs> I mean, literally, figuratively. It was like, it was like, I didn't realize that something like, if you, if I think about it now, something so simple as like skin and fat. I mean, it's just like part of your body could be such a switch that could happen in my soul, in my mind, in my like everything about me. That it was like, oh, you match more. It was just, it was, it felt everything was right. Yeah, most things were right. It was like. It, it was amazing. And if I had known that, what that would have felt like, and that's not for everybody, of course, that was for me. But, um, you know, people in Seattle had have helped me with fundraisers and amazing support. I'm very lucky that way and, and blessed. And, um, I, it, it was remarkable to have that happen. Um, yeah. So, and I, I'll, I'll, we'll move on after this next question, but as your, as you're transitioning, uh, because there's, there's those, I don't know how to explain it, but there's like those ugly duckling moments that I've seen mm -hmm. when people are transitioning, either middle female, 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 but there's that moment when you're st starting to take the hormones of the testosterone and things are kind of awkward. People start noticing like, hmm, there's something different about you. Like, yeah. um, how was your experience telling friends or family uh, that there was going on or or did you or did you wait till it was finally done yeah good question so um think about it this way um it, it's it's just that we went through or i went through puberty at um you know 30 36 so that's what everyone does and it just happens to be when we're kids so we have the awkward stage when we're when we're kids right and then um so it's just that i went through through my male puberty <laughs> at 36 um, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a huge mental, emotional, physical transition. And what I did was, um, I realized for me, I knew I owned a business in Seattle. I knew so many people up here that I, ha I personally had to do it public. So I, um, I held, I had a, um, I told my family and like my close friends in person or on the phone. And then I had a, a survey monkey and I sent it out to like about 30 or 40 of my other, you know, my next layer of friends and said, Hey, I'm going to change my gender. Help me pick a name. And then, then <laughs> I, I thought I was hilarious. I think most of them did too. They helped me pick a name. And then, um, the next one was I threw a party for my birthday because my birthday was coming up and I've got business cards, these little business cards with my new name on it. And I, um, invited as, as many people that wanted to come. And then I said, Hey, Oh, um, Hey, I'm glad you're here. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's great to see you. Oh, by the way, I'm changing my gender. Here's my new name. Drinks are over there. Have a great time. No. And then just kept doing that all night. And then I did that for about eight months and just went to each person, flew to California, told my family, which, you know, that was, it, it's great now, but that was, you know, obviously challenging for, for right. everyone. And then, um, so I had a really, um, very, I had a great story, a very, you know, whatever word you want to use for it, but, um, I, I'm very blessed to have had that experience. I'm still stuck on pick my game to, like, <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, yeah. I mean, if I got that email, I'd be like, <laughs> unless, unless you really know the person, you know, like, 
it's it's real, but in a joking way. Because that's yeah. probably something I would do. Something like, hey, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Here's- I wrote a few more sentences in there, kind of explained a little bit, but then I just, I never, here's what I did, Daniel. I never said, hey, what do you, do you want, how do you feel about it? Do you want to talk about it? I never did that. Because basically the person, like there were a few people that were like, came at me. They do this with everything though. In and in what I felt was a less than positive way. And I said, look, the only thing that's different here is you have information. I'm not asking you how you feel about it. I'm telling you information and now you have it. It's about me. It's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. I mean, unless it's my mom or it's somebody, my partner, or, you know, at the time or whatever, like I'm not, it, it's just information. And they're like, right. Oh, well, um, so, you know, here I'm still doing, I'm still exactly the same way I was 30 seconds ago. I'm still having my awesome life. I love myself. Now you know something. And they're like, <laughs> you that, know, and genius. That's genius because I'm, yeah, I'm not asking how you feel about it <laughs> because yeah. that that kind of gives people, I I feel like a permission, like like you're asking for their blessing to be able to do something, and you're like, no, this this is who I am, and I'm just yeah. respecting you by telling you. So here you go. Now you know. You're face to face. You know. And let's go hang out or let's, or see ya. I wish I had a GoPro on for that eight months because my sister Tammy would be standing next to me and it was just so funny. I mean, it was just like, boom, and let's go. Because instead of standing, like, because it's scary, instead of standing across the room and having people go, oh, you know, which I even did before because it's awkward. You don't know what to do. I just went right up and said, hi, blah, blah. Right. And then we just cut through the, the awkward and moved on. And, you know, if, if people don't feel comfortable or they want to go on, that's, that's their choice. And of course I have, I'm very sensitive. So I'm, I, so of course it would hurt me, but I just moved on. I just went, okay, next, you know, let's we'll do something else. That, so this is a suggestion for anybody listening out there. Not necessarily if you're going to transition, but if you've got something really important to tell your family and friends, get a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> Get one of those glasses yeah. with the hidden camera or something. You yeah. can record it and then and then call me and we'll, we'll do a documentary on it. This is a, good luck. I, I wish I would have had that idea when I was uh, coming out to people. Um, I, although I think most people knew that I was already except for me when I was out. Yeah, right. right. Um, but you're good now. You're you're happy. You're, yeah. you're you. Oh, I'm I'm so good. My life is amazing. Um, I I am doing. I wrote. I collaborated on a book. I, um, I own a business. I am a consultant and help on other, I'm an entrepreneur. I help other entrepreneurs. I have, you know, I've been traveling around meeting people. I took my grandmother on a four week trip, my 91 year old grandma on a four week trip from California to Texas. Uh, last February, we had an amazing time. I have an amazing um, relationship with my mom and dad. Um, my sister, two sisters, I have an amazing relationship with them and my niece and nephews. And I would say my life is is pretty bitching. That's the reaction. And now you're Winnebago Drew, so yeah. I, I dig that. I dig that. <laughs> um, I don't want to harp on that because I, I know we want to talk about other stuff. But I, I hope that you'll come back on the show another time and we can have a more bigger discussion uh, and, and educate people. And because I think your your take on on transition is is so exceptional. It just um, it's so you're so good to talk to and you're, it's, you just have this comforting energy that I think you'd be a great person to talk to about it. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll come back to that. I would love to anytime. And if you don't mind, I'll just tell you that um, you're in LA, right? Yes. Okay. So I was, I lived there for until I bought the Winnebago. So I have my doctor down there. um, And if we could connect and have her also come on the show uh, together, like I introduced her to the need for um, hormones in the area and in the orange County area. And, I couldn't find a doctor, and since then she's helped like f- over 500 patients. It's oh, been wow. like three years, so it'd be cool to also connect and get. She could give the technical side as well. Maybe you could. I'll connect you with her. Yeah, and that that I I, I did another episode like that, but with me. So we talked about like my cancer journey, and then the doctor talked about his side, and then the story meets, and that yeah. would be that would be really interesting to do. Yes, I it's on. I'm in. Um, so uh, for the folks listening, you're like, no, talk about it more. Sorry, there's going to be another episode. You have to listen to it again. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about, about the book. Um, how do they approach you or how do you approach them? 
what happens? Did they stalk you like I did? What's, <laughs> what's the deal? How did you come up with Okay, so this whole thing about what I've been doing this last year is following my gut, my intuition. And, and I did that. It's so crazy, Daniel. I, I went, I joined this email thing where you get notes from the universe every day, weekday. Yeah. And in the notes from the universe was a link that said, Hey, come to this thing in Santa Fe. I clicked on it, paid for it. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know what it was, but I was like, I'll go to a conference. That'll be fun. I can drive. Um, and because I signed up for that, um, Kim, who I think you are, are going to interview or you maybe have interviewed, she um, was is connected with that group and she saw me on Facebook and then we connected and she said, hey, there's an opportunity to write a book. I mean, it was literally because I said yes to something I didn't know I was saying yes to. I got this other opportunity to write a book and then I said yes to that and now I wrote a book. I, I collaborated on a book. It was like the universe was like, come on, let's go, come on. And I was like, okay. (laughs) What? Because it sounds really easy. And the way we say something like that, like, oh, I followed my gut and my intuition called me. I don't know. It it sounds really easy, but were there challenges? Were there moments of doubt? Were there situations you said, Winnebago Drew, what are you doing? Like, you can't just, (laughs) you can't just drive out there. Um, were there any moments where you kind of hesitated? Yeah, before I did it, before I did, um, before I transitioned and then after I transitioned, before I, um, before I bought the Winnebago, I hesitated, hesitated. And then when I bought that, I was like, okay, look, you're doing this. You took your grandma on this journey for four weeks. Like just start saying yes to things that feel right. And if they start to, if you're fake, like, because we can talk, I talk myself into things I used to. You know, and so I said, just don't talk yourself into it. If it, if it, and I, was it challenging to get to this point? Yes. Am I trying to follow, um, stay on the path that's right for me now? Yes. Also, I quit drinking over a year ago. I've just done things that are like making me stay on the path that I really want rather than the, um, avoidance, the foggy town, the, you know, the not showing up. I'm just showing up. And, um, is it like, hey, guys, it's so easy. Just come on. Yes and no. I believe I'm the kind of entrepreneur that believes anything's possible. Anything is possible. Look at me. Anything is possible. Um, and uh, you, But sometimes you do have to go through the mud a little bit to get to it. And by the mud, I mean your own. It's, it's, I always knew the answer was, was, was within me. I was just too scared to go in and get it. And I'm just trying to stay brave. Yeah. Um, I, I personally believe that uh, I call it just my attic in there. My brain, it's full of all these memories. There's all these boxes of, of memories and it's filled with good and bad and lukewarm stuff. And But in order to pull out the bravest moments of my life, or in order to pull out the moments where I just took charge of something, I have to find the memories where I was hurt. Um, the moment right before I thrived, there's usually a moment where I hit a rock bottom. And sometimes I'm so scared of looking at the rock bottom that I don't get to thrive again. Does that make sense? Yes. Don't make me cry. <laughs> that's, my, you know, that's my goal in every episode. I almost did right then. I was like, whoa. Oh, oh no. Yeah. We still have about 30 minutes to go. So I still have to do it. But does Do that really? make sense? Yeah. Does that make oh, sense wow. to you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, my rock bottom before I transitioned was like standing in a park. You'll read it in the book, but bake is basically in a parking lot in the rain, like in a opt, almost violent situation. Like I writing the book, I had to go deep and I wrote a chapter and I, I went down to LA to do our photo, our photo shoot and our like prep for the book. And I said, you know what, this isn't, it's, it's not, deep enough i am so i want to have deep conversations with people i don't stay in the shallow end and i thought you know what you didn't go deep enough and i did an edit and sent it back to our guy and they were our our people and they were like yeah that's it um i had to go deeper and get into why and a lot of the book um my it's my story mostly of, of transitioning and it and my dad's in there a lot and um it talks about where where that hurt was and why i was so angry and, you know, just wanting his love and that I didn't want to look at because we have a great relationship now and we'd always did, but it, I had to look at that and why, and you know, 
that isn't the hardest thing I've ever been through, but it's the hurt, hurt, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at, um, you know, I've been single for two years purposely and, um, not that anybody's coming running down, <laughs> the door, but like I've chose to be single. I, I ended a relationship, um, with, um, uh, my ex fiance and, and just knew that I had to go, I knew I had to go do this journey in life that is, um, a soulful journey. And I knew, I, I call it a contract with the universe. I knew I had inside me, I have to go do, did I want to do it up until now? No. Did I know it was there? Yeah. But it was scary. And I just said, you know what? It's time now. And so it's so funny because I'm so positive. It's like I'm a unicorn um, peeing rainbows all over the place, right? And and so sometimes people are, I know it looks like your life is amazing on Facebook or on Instagram. My gosh, you travel everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. Look at that. You know, I was whale watching yesterday. It was amazing. Well, every second's not amazing. Yeah. You know, I have challenges, but I... I have things I, I, I go through. I have, you know, but I, I choose, I choose to, to look for the positive. I choose to find the tools. I chose to find the tools and the team that helps me stay here. I have a mentor I talk to five days a week and, you know, she and I have helped each other get to this place in our life of like not only success, business success, but life success. Like I have set these things in place to get here. Um, anyway, I'm rambling on that. No, no, there, no, you're, but, you're doing great. You're doing great. But yeah, I just, um, okay, well, let, let's, yeah. let's take off that for a second because people just sometimes ask me like, um, after everything that I've been through in my life, like how, and my boyfriend knows me, he knows I'm not always, you know, able, you know, rainbows and butterflies. There's, there's shitty days. And I, but I learned the lesson from the shitty days. So that it carries me through the rest. Um, what, what do you, what is, what, what, do you, what does Drew worry about? What does Drew stress about? What, like, what's the hardest thing? Cause you're right. You, I look at your page and I'm like, screw you. <laughs> screw you, Winnebago Drew, for driving everywhere you want and do whatever you want. Cause I remember trying to get a hold of you. He's like, well, I'll, I'm going to be here, but I might be over there. <laughs> I'm like, screw you. Um, and I, at first, I'll admit it. I'll admit it online. I was like, he is so cocky. Like, he is so really. Off. Yeah, I was like, did you I, really? Yeah, because oh so I was, God, I was so like, I don't know true. where I'm gonna be, but if you know, if I'm somewhere where I can get online, I'll do it. I'm, I'm like, I don't want you anymore. I don't want you on my show. <laughs> I and, have to think about that because I that is totally not. <laughs> and then, and then you come to me with like, I wrote a book, and you know, I, with. And at first it was like three people and I was like, Oh, I can do that three people. And then all of a sudden it turns into nine people. I'm like, it's like I invited Drew to the party <laughs> and he brought the whole family. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> it's, 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 Hopefully there's it's, no crazy uncles. <laughs> it's like an episode of Mary Tell Them More where like you invite one person and everybody's like, What the hell? Uh but no, I'm totally I'm now I'm totally grateful. It's totally, totally cool. But what now, where you are in your life now, because I'm sure mm -hmm. before there was but where you are now, what, what's, what's, what brings you down? I guess that's what be that word. Well, um, I think, um, doing what I'm doing right now, I know that I, like I said, I have a, um, a purpose, but the, the interesting part is, is that I don't know exactly what it is yet, but I know it. It's hard to explain that, but I'm at peace with knowing it's coming and I'm on the right track. And doing that can be lonely because it can be really easy for me to go, you know, I, I love champagne, to go have some champagne, to go maybe do some of the stuff I used to do, maybe date, you know, um, people that maybe aren't quite the right person for me and I'm not the right person for them and, and fulfill that instant gratification that I so, I learned so well to do that when I was younger um I would say that's really challenging to stay in it and not um deviate from this um plan that I don't really have exactly <laughs> what it is down yet um and then I would say um as a transgender person from speaking for myself um you know for the record mo it's usually off limits to talk with the transgender person about surgeries 
and people probably don't know that, but it's highly inappropriate. But I'm going to talk about myself right now. Um, for me, I would say my biggest challenge is, is to, you know, get things in line to finish my surgeries. I would say that is um, knowing – before I transitioned, I made sure I was there emotionally and, and mentally in a place where I, I could do this. And I would say the same thing for the rest of, of my, my transition. Um, and so I would say that's my biggest challenge is, is making sure that whatever I do, it's because I, it's what I really want for me, not because I think it's going to fix something. Um, does that make sense? Like I'm not yeah, going to yeah. go. So that's my biggest um, challenge. And then there's, I mean, there's tons of other challenges. Like how do you like a ceiling for success? Like how do I get my business to the next level so that I'm actually you know, in a, in a different bracket. How do I, how do I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur with ideas. I'm con I mean, the ideas come to me where I would love to have a warehouse where I get to invent things. Like when do I get to that point? Like, well, you I can't have, have that. If you're Winnebago Bigel Drew, you need <laughs> sure, to you can be in one spot and I can still travel. Would you a U-Haul in the back? What the hell? A rack on top. Well, before, <laughs> cause I have a, what you just talked about, I, I, I understand and I'll, I'll say, I'll tell my story in a minute, but um, how for folks listening, because we all, we all have challenges. I tell people life sucks. It's just what you make with it. Like it's going to suck. Life is, life is a bitch and she'll throw you curves anywhere she can, but it's, it's how you bat it out. Like, and I'm a, I'm a horrible sports player now. That, that was probably the worst sports NLG ever, but, um, life sucks and you just have to make the best of it. Um, how did you, how did you get centered? How did you find that balance to go? Cause you need to be in that perfect balance at least for a moment to go. This is a direction that I want to go into. What, what did you do to find that balance for yourself? Um, I, I left my relationship with somebody I loved very much. And I would say I did that, got myself a little apartment down by the beach in Seal Beach and had my dog, started routines. It was simple. It was like, take your dog out at 6 a.m. every morning, put your little Murphy bed up right when you get up <laughs> in your studio, take your dog out for a walk, come back in, you know, do this, do this next step, whatever. Um, and then I started, um, I isolated myself in the sense of I built a little cocoon, basically. I had a purpose. I wasn't woe is me, even though it was, I could have been. I was, you're going to change the rest of your life. You're going to change this. this you're going to change your future. You're going to change your tomorrows. So keep, and I kept, I made myself stay in the positive rather than go because I could have gone to the love love movies and you know all the <laughs> and watch the notebook or whatever but I was like no you're gonna do this and then strangely enough or maybe not or you know trendy enough I found yoga um, I found a place in Orange County with um, I walked in the door I was terrified of it I walked in I was late it's hot yoga it's late I'm scared I'm gonna try it and I walk in and you know what happens. You walk in late to this place which is gorgeous with beautiful people. And the yoga instructor who's gorgeous goes, I'm really glad you're here. In that moment, it's like she came over and hugged me and we are like, she's like my soul sister now. And oh. she, she, I let her help heal me, but I didn't take her power. I was like, you need to get your own power. I know it's, this maybe sounds woo woo, but like, I was con I was aware of what I was doing in those in those times and some of it I wasn't but I was like you're not going to go leech onto somebody else and you love her but not like that because it's easy to fall with some for somebody who's like whoa right. Right. but I was like that's not what that is you you love her soul and she loves your soul and she's your dear friend and 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 built this beautiful relationship and and um got a a crew of people down there um another person a, a guy Josh, who oh, I probably shouldn't say names, but a guy who's a white male ex army dude that I, I honestly would have not friended because I would have been afraid. He and I are like best buds and he ended up 
um, getting engaged to her and they're going to be married. It's like this amazing, like, um, core of people that I've, I met that helped me get there. But also my mentor, I talked to five days a week. So I built a team of people and I, I excluded things that I, I couldn't handle that weren't good for me. Right. Um, so, but it all started up here. I had to make sure that I was doing things that kept me um, mentally feeling good. So and he's pointing to his head, people. He's pointing oh, to his head. <laughs> yeah, I'm pointing to my brain. Um, so I had to just make sure that, and and I I just I chose Daniel. I said I don't want to do it this other way anymore. It's time. I'm going to step into my bigger life. All right. And deciding to step into your bigger life is scary as hell, but it is so worth it. Um. I can say for me, it, it is so worth it, and it's still scary. There are times when I, when I in May went to that conference, ended up being a conference where I learned <laughs> I'm a certified coach. <laughs> I didn't even know why I was there. I, I showed up. I said, "So what is this conference?" They're like, "Are you kidding me, Drew? You don't know?" I'm like, "No, it's it was um, Mike Dooley from The Secret, his mm. his program." So I became a certified coach in Infinite Possibilities, and and um, while I was huh. there, I I decided that I was gonna. Um, make my contract with the universe. So again, I was stepping into a bigger life and I was terrified. And my mentor said, are you kidding? You never seem afraid on the phone before I went on to the speech. And I said, I'm terrified. I'm, I'm, I'm to my core scared out of my mind. And I went in there and I did it. And I, it's almost like the gates opened up again. The whole world opened up again. People started reaching out. Hey, you want to do a, you know, a talk at, for Kimberly Clark, their lunch and learn. Yeah, I do. Hey, do you want to, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, it, it so. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Few people in my life know, and Christian's one of them, that one of my biggest fears that I still hold on to is that people are going to discover that I'm a complete fraud, that I don't know how to act, that this podcast is just full, and that my intuitive work and readings are just me pulling things out of the air. I'm like, one day somebody's going to discover everything. I'm going to be a fraud. I'm going to put in jail and people are going to whip me. Well, that might be kind of, but, um, uh, and he's like, shut up. Like you're, you're good. Like just keep going. Um, so I, I, I'm admitting to fears. I was very afraid to do this series because I'm, I'm interviewing all nine of you guys. And I'm like, like it's a big, it's big. Like, it's the first time I do something like this. I'm like, ah. Anyway, really? Yeah, because I've interviewed a couple of people that work for the same organization, or but it's usually just two people, and like I've known them for a long time, and but I really I don't know any of you, and I, I you like you I I knew of you, and I researched you, and I googled you, but the rest of the folks I really have to like. Well, how, where do I start? Like, yeah. how do I begin to? Luckily, they everybody's been really cool about sending their info, but it's scary. It's scary, and and uh, um, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, so I kind of bullshit it. But it's worked. <laughs> it's worked so far. But you know um, what I think, Daniel? I want to speak to that. So, um, what's so what's so interesting is I think that, that you fall in this category. From my perception, is you actually and I, actually everybody does does they just don't know it is that you actually, all you have to do is show up as you, and that's enough. So you are the brand. You are the the success. You are the career. I'm putting my quotes up. You are it. And that's what I started to realize about myself is like, actually, you just have to show up as you and just be you. And that is your job for myself. That is my job to just show up and be me. and and. And that's so funny because no, people would never know we're scared. No, no. I, yeah, no, I, I can do. Okay, quick, 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 quick story. Um, I had a dream before, I, right after I was diagnosed. I was, I'd been diagnosed with AIDS for a year when I had this dream. And in my dream, God came to me and said, I have something for you. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a hard road. It's going to be difficult. But. If anybody can do something good with this, it's you. So I'm going to give this to you. And I was like, okay, you're God. All right, G. And, um, and before, when, whenever I, <laughs> before I was diagnosed, it was always nothing. I was like, yeah, G and I have a good relationship. We're good. So in the dream, God goes, I'm going to give you AIDS. 
and in my dream I didn't have it yet, but it, I'm watching the dream and going, but you already have AIDS. Like, what's the deal? God's like, because I know that you're going to do something amazing with this. And in my, I, I, in my dream, I'm, I'm telling him, I'm like, oh, you're God. If you believe that I can do this, then I can do it. I may not have faith in myself, but I'm going to trust your faith and, and I will do it. And then I woke up and whatever. But that's been my, my way of thinking for the last almost 17 years. If, if, if Winnebago Big Drew thinks I can do this, then I can do it. I may not have the confidence myself. I may not believe in myself. But if you see something in me that says, if anybody can do this, it's Daniel, then I can do it. That's all I need. And, and like you said, I'll just show up and do my best. And if yeah. it works, great. If it doesn't work, nobody has ever has to hear these. Um, but so far, I think we've talked about 45 minutes and it, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yes, I will have the videos and the, the audio to prove it someday. Um, when, one day when you're in that relationship and you all settle down, I'll, I'll, I'll blackmail you with it. And say, <laughs> Do it. Remember? Um, but yeah, and there was something that I, that I wrote down and I, um, Anyway, we'll move, we'll move on. So we're at about the 15 minute mark. Um, this is the part where we throw some words of wisdom to the listeners. And, uh, what words of wisdom do you have for my listeners? Well, um, speaking to the story that you just said, that you just told us, then thank you for telling that. Um, I also think that I was born this way on purpose. I think that I'm so lucky that I got to be born me. I don't feel like, oh, what happened? This isn't fair. I'm so grateful I got to be born me because I do think that there there is a bigger purpose for what I'm doing. And I think that if I wasn't born this this way, the, who exactly who I am, then I wouldn't have got to be me spiritually, emotionally, and I really like myself. So I think that um, it was a, a gift. And to be able to think of it that way is challenging. But I think it, I do believe that it's true. So my words of wisdom, if you will, would be um, it's speaking to something you had just said, which is if somebody else thinks I can do it, I can do it. Sometimes it's hard to see in our, our the, the light ourselves or to see the answer ourselves. I'm typically a person that does problem solution, problem solution. But there are times that happen, believe it or not, with a little unicorn over here and rainbows that says, I don't see it. I don't think I can do it or, or whatever. And what, what my mentor has taught me and what we tell people as well is borrow my faith, borrow my faith in you. So if you don't think you can do that, whatever it is, whether it's get up and go out of the house to go to the store or leave something that's, that's very unhealthy for you or whatever, or do something wonderful. If you don't think you can do it, then borrow my faith in you. Because I t I'll tell you this, I'm going to borrow your faith in me. And we sometimes need to do that. And I often will do it. Um, so building that team, and it's not always the team of people or things you think it will be. Sometimes it's strangers. Um, sometimes it's people who don't even know you. Yeah. Sometimes it's just listening to something like this. You know, coming on here and listening to you and having them never have met you. You know, that could be your team. That could be your faith that you need to borrow. Um, right. But it's there. And I'm, I'd be happy to be part of anybody's team <laughs> if, they, if they're really looking for it. Now I remember what I wrote down. Um, you were talking about, um, and it kind of got to me because you were talking about your plan and you don't know what your plan is. Um, and that's something that I've talked about for a long time. Um, I, I've been sick for one thing or another since I was a kid. And, um, I had trouble when I was a baby and then I had AIDS to deal with and cancer a couple of years ago and my ostomy and there's always been some kind of issue, drugs, alcohol, you name it. Um, and there have been several times in my life where I almost died and um, especially my older sister um, who's a very Bible thumper for, for a time. She's a lot more, she's freed from that a little bit. But she always said, uh, God has a plan for you. It's like, and at the last, the last time that I almost died, she's like, why don't you die? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, just like, God has a really big plan for you. And, um, 
that uh, there's a lot of pressure in somebody saying to that that many time. I don't know if you agree with this, but you kind of start going, "Crap, what do I have to do?" And sometimes I've asked G, like, "Hey, dude, like, can't you just send me a burning bush? Can you mail me something? Can you do a Harry Potter thing? Just send me an owl with a letter? Like, do you, does it have to be getting sick every time?" And uh, yeah. um, but I've started to believe that not in a cocky way. But in a, I need to keep moving. I need to keep going because I don't know where that plan is. It's like a scavenger hunt. And if I don't keep searching, I'm never going to find it. And I'll be damned if I'll die not knowing where my plan is. And who knows? We may not know until we get there. And he's like, ah, this was your last stop. (laughs) Here it is, (laughs) a a new car. (laughs) Like the price is right or something. Right. But I, I feel like we're, Kindred spirits in that, that we have this yeah. plan that somebody's talked about and it's, it's like now stuck in our brain and, mm-hmm. and our heart is like this GPS thing and you just have to keep finding it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard. It's tiring. It can be, it can be lonely because not everybody understands where this energy or passion comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned to not, for instance, make my boyfriend plan B all the time because my own personal brain would say, if you don't go to this event, or if you don't go do this job, your plan might be there. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, you're, now you're just being ridiculous. Like, but uh, does that make sense? Yes. Here? Yes, it's tricky too to think to to let not let the the mind tr- like try and guide the 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 GPS right. Like this the, the the intuition. Um, I mean, I can walk up to a to a slot machine and pull the thing and win. But if I go, ooh, I think I'm feeling, I w- ooh, ooh, let's, I'm, I can talk myself into thinking I'm lucky too. So, um, something I want to say to what you you just said, Daniel, is it, it could could come across cocky, but it's just I know it. You seem to know it, and it's just that we know it and if people want to take it that way they can but sometimes it's tiring to be me and sometimes I think it's probably tiring to be you and so here's what my rule is and this is what I talked to with my authors in the book I was like hey hey guys check it out or hey folks check it out I have to be watered rested and fed anytime I do any of the work if I'm not water rested and fed I, I can't show up there I can't do I can't bring it so I have to make sure I'm all of those things to be able to do, to be able to be me because it's very, it takes a lot of patience and it's, it can be very tiring. And sometimes I have to say no to things and not show up to everything and, and listen to my gut. It's, it's the tricky thing of, of, is it my mind telling me to show up there or is it my, my intuition? Um, and I think we're still figuring it out. It sounds like, I mean, we maybe we always will be. Um, but yeah, I think that the, for me, the biggest thing for me was, um, watered, rested, and fed, and you can either be mad about it or not mad about it. So, um, you know, perspective. Um, I'm going to use that. Watered, rested, and fed. I'm gonna seriously. Well, we one thing we have not talked about, and uh, this will, <laughs> we're going to go over the hour. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, what guided you to the book? How did you come on to the book? Because this is why the series is. But Yeah. So the book is called Positive uh, Minded People. And that's basically what I'm doing. My Instagram is Positively Real Life. I'm, I'm innately positive. It was like, oh, of course it's that. Of course I'm going to talk to a group of people called Positively <laughs> Positive Minded People. Um, and the book is about, um, you know, overcoming adversity in a positive way. And there's nine authors. Um, I'm lucky to be one of them. Um, and we all tell our story. Um, and there's a story for, for, for pretty much most scenarios in there. Um, there's something probably relatable. Um, here's my take on it. My story may not be relatable to, you know, there's only a percentage of transgender people. My story isn't, isn't really for transgender people or about being transgender. My story, I would say, is about this. I think everybody has a transition in their life and, and most people have many. 
mine happens to be called a transition and mine happens to be something that, you know, I changed my body and, 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 you know, hormone chemistry and all that. But I think everybody has these moments and these crossroads in their life. And it's, it's, here's the thing. It's all not, not always easy for me to even accept. We don't have to take it. We don't have to take that, that, that road. So we have this transition. Let's say it's, it's, hey, I'm partying a lot and I cannot party and go do this. Some people are going to stay partying. Some people are going to stay in this maybe relationship that's not working. Some people are going to stay in this job they don't like because they get to decide if they want to take, make that change and have that transition. So I think, <clears throat> so that part is, is, is challenging because, um, we can't, Tell everybody, come on, everybody, do what I think you should do, right? It's, it, but I think everybody does have these moments in their life of having this transition. And, and seeing somebody else do it, hearing somebody else do it, and hearing it come out okay, maybe not initially, maybe it was hard. It, I guarantee you every one of these stories, there's p- p- parts of it that were hard. But to know that, that you can get through it. And the key is, for me, is being my most authentic self. That's awesome. So, but how, and, okay, not to dismiss that, but, yeah, we, we all transition. We all, maybe not physically, but mentally, spiritually, uh, your soul. Um, and then on a daily basis, you transition from, I always think, like, the clothes I wear make me feel different. The way my hair is cut makes me feel different. Uh, for women, if you dye your hair or don't dye your hair, if you put it in a bun or not, there's there's all these things that we transition to on a daily basis that we don't think affect us, mm-hmm. but can make you feel like I I am a different person when I'm wearing sneakers to when I'm wearing my boots. Yeah, like you, you put my Texas boots on. <laughs> and, oh man, there's a whole new Garza that comes out, <laughs> and and I think that we need we need all those parts of us. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like I, 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 I believe that anybody who transitions from anything or other, you need all those levels because I, I'm pretty sure that you don't forget who you were right. to carry you through who you are. You have to because it's it was a part of your uh, of you for a long time, right? Right. right. Um, but how, and, and to add to that story, I'm not, not not but to add to that story, how did you come up to these guys, or did they come up to you and say, hey? Drew, whenever you go Drew, whenever you get time. <laughs> well, it, it, that um, Kim um, is who um, Kim O'Neill is who connected me because I said yes to that conference in Santa Fe. I was in a Facebook group with her. She said, "Hey, can I? You know, I'm a life coach. Can I meet with other people that are doing this?" And I said, "Oh, I'll meet with you." And then I said, "Oh, wait, I just be- started. I'm new. Oh, that's fine." And we started chatting through Facebook, and then. She Facebook messaged me one day with this opportunity to write a book. I mean, it was like that odd and that um, weird oh. that it just happened that way. Yeah. So, and so well, I, I said I thought yes. in the beginning when you mentioned it that you were kind of like cutting through parts, but it was just that. It was just that. It was. Oh, it was. Okay. It was. It was so easy that it was like I'm going to say yes to this because. And, and it was interesting because people who, other people who got that same message said no for lots of reasons. And I was like, and they were excuses, but they were good. I'm sure they were real reasons for them. But I was like, no, you're not going to give a reason. You're going to say yes. Even though you've never wrote a book, you've always wanted to just say yes. Yes. (laughs) And I, you know, we had to, yeah. So I said yes to it and got on board. And then, then I had to write it um, and (laughs) show up for that. Right. (laughs) Um, and then there was opportunity to go to LA and we didn't have to go, but it was a photo shoot. And I said, I'll fly. I was in Seattle and I flew down and, um, went to the photo shoot and met everybody. By the way, they're all lovely and, and really fun. So they'll be, you'll have a lot of fun in interviews. Okay. Um, and, and it was that simple and easy, which again made me think this is the right thing because it wasn't challenged. There were, there were no obstacles. Right. Was yeah. there ever a moment where you thought, it can't be this easy. There, there, there's got to be something. Where's the cameras? Like somebody's gonna punk me any minute. I don't do that anymore because I have I things are happening. Things happen in my life that are like, like I went whale watching yesterday and saw a humpback and killer whale. Um, I'm sorry, orcas, 
like like that on whale watching trip. Sometimes you didn't see any, and I thought, of course I did. So now instead of going, that can't be true, I say, of course it, of course it was, of course it happened. So I changed my way of accepting that because I think it's an upper limit thing. If I do that, then it's like, oh, I can't believe this happened. You know, no, of course it happened. Mm-hmm. So I think that for me, I started over time. I changed my 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 me- mental dialogue with that, and and I get a different result. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> book release. Do you know all the information? When? Where? How? It is uh, coming out in October. Yep. Um, we're going to be on all the the, the regular sites, um, Amazon stuff like that. Um, we're gonna all also the authors are going to have book signings, so uh, we will get to you. We'll have Michelle um, or or the PR people get to you uh, back to you on that and be able to post it on on your um, your page and your information. Uh, but here's what the cover looks like. Pretty cool. So you can see it, and I don't know if you can take a photo of that. I just but, did. Um, yeah. All right. Yay. Um, and so yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be a short small book so it's don't, nothing too intimidating uh but uh, i'm excited to to share it with people and see what they think yeah i've, I've read most of it um, oh nice yeah so i got a i got a pre-copy uh online but i want a real copy signed so whenever you come through here once i get my um uh i have to show up with my cameras and my uh microphone and interview people so I'm going to meet you, you in person. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll come down there and meet you and your um, husband or boyfriend in person for sure. Yes. Well, that was part of the original plan. I know, um, but I was traveling. <laughs> Winnebago Drew, but you were too busy traveling to meet Daniel Parsons or whatever. Uh, I would say I'm not going to take it personal, but I am taking it very personal. So I'm just, I'm well, I haven't told anybody else I will come personally meet them after an interview, so there you go. That's the first one. Yes, okay. Yeah. Great. I will take that. I will take that. Plus, I, lo- I, I mean, I would say I lo- come to Seattle. We love Seattle. Oh, yeah. One of my, one of my first, some of my dear friends live in Seattle, so I love Seattle. Um, cool. So tell folks, uh, where can they find you? How can they find you? Uh, where are you? Excellent. So I have a website, uh, drewbenson.com. It's D-R-E-W-B-E-N-S-E-N. So all E's in there. Um I have a fun public Instagram that's positively real life on Instagram. That's a fun one. Um, if you're in Seattle, I own a dog walking business up here called Close to Home Pet Services. And um, the book is called Positive Minded People, and it'll be out in October 2017. And uh, it's with nine, eight other authors, and that's how you get a hold of me. Cool. Um, what was one of the hardest memories to find when you were writing your part? <laughs> um, I would say um, talking about the conversation with my dad when we first saw each other in person um, because it shares his story too. It shares his side and I have to um, put that out there for him. I would say um, talking about when I was a little kid, getting all the comments from dads when I was in the playing, playing T-ball and all the comments yelled at me. Those are hard still. Um, and I would say reliving the, um, the experience of um, the altercation right before I, I uh, decided to, to get help and, and get therapy. Um, I would say that was, those were hard things to, to write about because you have to go step by step and you relive them in your, your mind and heart. Was um, there, it, uh, I'm sorry. But it was worth it. Was there a happy memory that you'd forgotten about that came back to you? <laughs> um, I... I mean, my my um, experience with my sisters, um, my mom, um, talking, um, my my grandmother, I'm going on the trip with her. Um, I mean, even though the story is is talks about the dark parts, I still I still enjoyed it. I, I still talk about. I mean, it still felt good to 
to, to talk about. Um, and then one part I would say is, is looking at it now and, and thinking from a, from a, comp- a compassionate way or angle, um, towards my parents and, and, and being so grateful for our relationship now. Um, you know, I, I think I have a, a very, very lucky, beautiful life that I've been designing and I am extremely grateful for. So. That's really cool. Um, okay. One more question. And I was going to ask this earlier and I forgot. Um, when, when Drew comes to be, was there a mourning process to the old you? Um, I would say I pranced out of there with like <laughs> party lights on and like, <laughs> oh hell yeah. Ow! Um, <laughs> that wasn't the, that wasn't the answer I was, I was looking for. It's like, okay. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, like there were times when it was, I was terrified. Like, I remember telling my sister Tammy that I can never go back to California because I can never face the family again. I mean, there's morning of like, of, of, losing um people sure yeah um and then and then thinking about my my family losing you know their sibling losing their their daughter later i couldn't do it when i was transitioning because i needed all that energy and all that support to get through that but when i like years later thought about it and 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 really heard them say that um then I, then it was like, you know, I felt that, um, I still don't really like to look at old pictures of me and stuff because it, it, I know it's me and I, I, I relate, but I also don't. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, that's, thank you for being so open about it. I, I really appreciate it. If, You're welcome. Again, there's something, I mean, I really get intimidated in conversations. Cause I always fake it like, Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm super quick. I'm cool. I'm Daniel Garza. But it, it, it did talking to you was one of the more, cause the other people I really didn't know. And I'm going to go, I Google them and I'm like, okay, but knowing some of your backstory, I was like, Oh wow. I'm intimidated. I want to, I wouldn't want to mess up. Like, uh, Oh yeah. Like Winnebago Drew is going to hate me if I say something stupid. Um, oh, yeah. then he'll never come to Southern California. Uh, <laughs> But I'm I'm glad that you opened up and, and and made it easier for me to be able to ask my ignorant questions and get the clarification. So I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Um, You're welcome. You know, I want to say I know we have to go, but um, I chose early on to not get angry if people messed up pronouns or messed up. Um, I'm not to say that it doesn't hurt when it happens or it doesn't kind of do that like Ugh, inside, um, because I do not like to feel that way. I mess up all the time. I say things and I go, ooh. Like I even said on this interview, you guys, and, and typically it's that doesn't accept it because there's a non-binary, you know, all that stuff. And I, I say things too and go, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. or And I don't like how that feels. And so I don't want anybody else to feel that way. So if I can be that person that you, you have that first conversation with so that you can feel comfortable, that makes me feel so good. So thank you for that. Thank you for yeah. saying that. Because uh, working in – Nonprofits and the AIDS uh, community for so many years. I've met people who have done this before. I never felt comfortable. They just never yeah. made me feel comfortable because there was this there was this little bit of, of, of I, I don't even find I can't even find the word like Not, a guard up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like they assumed right away that you were going to offend them. So before you could, they were trying to offend you and you were like, calm down, sister. Like, I'm just trying to like, Hey, calm down. Yeah. Um, but I don't know with, with you, I met, I mean, when I heard of you or when I saw you, you're Drew. So I know you as Drew and that's, that's all that I care. You're cool. So I look forward that's to meeting you. So yeah. And of course now to me, you're, Winnebago Drew, so. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> um, so that will be forever your name. I don't know. Maybe I'll use that in, in the in the title of this episode. Who knows? <laughs> we'll leave that to other. Um, 
when I come down there, um, we should meet up and I'll give you all a tour of the Winnebago and you can um, take pictures and stuff. We'll go down to like Crystal Cove and to that beautiful place and, and, uh, and, and take photos down there. That'd be really neat if we could, you know, plan that out. We will definitely, I will, I will take that. Um, I'm, awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Uh, like I said, I plan for you to be out here in person. Um, but you're traveling all over the country, so it's kind of hard to get a hold of you. <laughs> As I say, that's probably why people can't don't want to date you because they're like, oh, I know, right? I'll get Dang all in it. love, and uh, all of a sudden he's gone. Like bridges of Madison County, just pick up and leave. I know, like who who takes off to, to to New Mexico and Arizona? What are you doing? Well, I'm following the sun. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, folks. Well, um, Drew Benson, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having uh, me. And then thank you for hooking me up with Michelle and everybody else so that I can do all this. Again, uh, one of my biggest dreams was always to be like the uh, Latino male gay version of Oprah. Uh, oh, nice. And, and this is, I don't think she ever did this. So I have nine people working on one project. And I, I find it really cool that I originally thought, well, that many people will we'll give them like 10, 15 minutes each. They can talk about their book. I'll be fine. But then Michelle goes, no, everybody wants an hour. I'm like, Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Well, we can do that. Like, yeah, I didn't expect everybody to want an hour. And I was like, we can definitely do that. So their um, stories are fascinating. You're going to be, it, they're really fascinating. So well, it's going to be I, fun. Well, so far so good. So I'm excited. <laughs> um, thank you again for being on the show. Anything else you want to throw out there before we, we go? I'm good. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't hang up. Stay there. For everybody listening, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Uh, Drew Benson, one of the authors. Uh, say the name of the book again because it's, it's so positive, short. I can't remember. Yeah, Positive Minded People. But then there's that extra title to it. Yeah. Positive Minded People, Inspiring Stories of Overcoming Adversity for Living a More, a more Positive yeah. Life. Could you have added anything else to that title? Was it no more room? I, no, I think, yeah, it was the biggest uh, title so far. I think we're breaking a record or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, the book's coming out in October, guys. Make sure you look for it. We'll have all of the information on the Facebook page, Little Mexican Productions. Make sure you check it there and the put it together podcast page. Uh, thank you again to my, my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers. Thank you, sir. Please go check out abnormalentertainment.com where you can find all the shows on the network. Check me out at uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Little Mexican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N, or Little Mexican Productions. You can find all the information to all my guests, pictures, uh, links, everything you want will be on there. If you want to be on the show, you can email me at Daniel G. Garza at Hotmail.com, D-A-N-I-E-L-G-G-A-R-Z-A, Hotmail.com. Put podcasts on the, on the subject so I can uh, answer you, or just message me on, on any of those sites. Uh, thanks again to Mr. Drew Benson for being on the show. And, uh, this is Daniel Garza saying, Hey, put it together. Oh, but I admit that I judge a man by the woman and her smile. The light up in her eyes. The way she holds him when they dance. She's a window. His best friend, don't you know? Judge a day by the sun. You judge a man by the woman. You could spend all day watching work and play. Get to know his habits and his friends Learn what makes him laugh And pry into his past What makes him cry, what makes him sin You may think that you can see right through But the best thing you can do Is judge a man by the woman and her smile The 
light up in her eyes The way she holds him when they dance She's the window to his soul His best friend, don't you know Judge a day by the sun Judge a man by the woman Subscribe to Put It Together on iTunes, Stitcher, and at abnormalentertainment.com slash put it together. Find Put It Together on Facebook and tweet Daniel at Lil Mesican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.